नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव सीरीज ऑन सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा डिड यू नो इंडिया हैज द हाईएस्ट नंबर ऑफ वुमेन स्टेम ग्रेजुएट्स इन द वर्ल्ड एज पर अ वर्ल्ड बैंक रिपोर्ट देयर आर नियरली 43% इंडियन फीमेल ग्रेजुएट्स इन स्टेम एट द टर्शियरी लेवल इन इन फैक्ट इन सम ऑफ द मोस्ट डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज लाइक द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स दिस नंबर स्टैंड्स एट जस्ट अराउंड 34% इन द यूके इट इज 38% जर्मनी अबाउट 27% एंड फ्रांस 32% The All India Survey on Higher Education reflects an increase in women enrollment in STEM disciplines which are the four closely connected areas of study science technology engineering and mathematics. However, despite the considerable increase over the last few years in the participation of women in science, what strikingly visible is the share of women in STEM jobs. STEM education translate into jobs for just about 12 to 14% of the women in India. Over the years there have been various efforts and undoubtedly there have been several initiatives as well to address the challenges of under representation and also gender disparity in STEM fields at the same time it's important to note the contribution of those who've broken the barriers carved a niche path for themselves and in the process inspired hundreds of others to have a formidable future in STEM jobs so this special edition of our program is about celebrating some of the most passionate and inspiring women in science who've made a mark in their respective areas of expertise and are now blazing a trail for younger women to follow in their footsteps as we celebrate the significant milestone of 75 years of our independence it gives me immense pleasure today to interact with the leading change makers of india those who have contributed significantly to india's growth over the years i'm delighted to welcome on this edition of the special broadcast of azadi ka amrit mahotsav program uh, ms tk anuradha she's former director satcom program indian space research organization Also delighted to welcome Professor Uma Ramakrishnan Ecology and Evolution National Center for Biological Sciences Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and the third guest with us is Professor Aditi Sen Day Department of Physics Harish Chandra Research Institute Prayagraj thank you to all my guests for uh, you know for your time and for joining us on this special program on Sunset TV uh, TK Anuradha ma'am allow me to begin the program today with you uh tell us about how your journey has been at the national space agency and you know of course at the time that you may have begun there were very few women in in this particular industry to say so how has your journey been and what are the challenges that you've seen over the years you are very right the time when i joined i joined uh, um iso indian space research organization in 1982 at the end of 1982 and we were not many ladies and today you find many young women who are doing exceedingly well at isro and uh, i think uh, mm, the journey had been wonderful thanks to uh, the sanskar the childhood what is instilled in us and the training in terms of education not in terms of degree and all that the true sense of education that is uh, you know that which liberates that is education sa vidya ya vimukta ye and the environment the office environment was so good at isro that uh, uh, there was no differentiation any time between men and women and opportunities and appreciations or even you know uh, uh, it has to be told that it's not correct uh, there was no differentiation between men and women and we had equal opportunity the more i could invest myself more i could get back from the office too so that was a healthy environment and uh, i'm really thankful for the uh, such a uh, great opportunity i had fortunately uh, you've had a good experience at, uh, at isro but whether that has been the same for professor sain and professor ramakrishnan is something that i'll go across to them as well <laughs> but uh, professor ramakrishnan coming to you first to understand how your journey has been what inspired you to choose biomedical research in the first place a, a quite unconventional again at the time that you may have started so uh, thanks for that question uh, i should qualify that uh, i work on biodiversity Uh, i work on uh, tigers uh, other endangered species but i use genetics as a tool uh, and this is really unconventional uh, uh, choice in some sense um i think that uh, since i was young i always loved animals i always loved nature and i was always curious and there seemed to be so much we didn't know about them uh, we kind of ignored them they were just outside our purview of of you know our world 
And so uh, I was just curious and just followed my curiosity. I didn't really plan, you know, I have to become this great scientist or I have to do these great things. I just kept following my curiosity. And I've been very lucky uh, to be uh, in a system such as the TIFR, where there is a space for that, to follow your curiosity. No one said, why are you working on tigers? Why are you bringing tiger shit into the lab? Uh, I just was free to really grow and do uh, what I was interested in as long as it was good science. Certainly. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, one question, and that's quite in intriguing, because uh, uh, you're all women who come from uh, very unconventional fields. Uh, even now, uh, as we talk, even today, even though we have the highest number of STEM graduates in the world, they don't, uh, you know, necessarily translate into jobs. And that is one challenge that we have been facing. Uh, Professor Sen, tell us about your journey. You, again, you know, fall into the category of rare women who has made significant contributions to quantum information and communication. And, uh, you know, you've also been awarded with the most most uh, prestigious science prize, which is the Shanti Suru Bhatnagar Award. So, uh, you know, tell us about how your journey has been. And in this society where all of us have a tendency, you know, and all of us live very sheltered lives, how has your journey been so far in this very, very unconventional area? Yeah, so actually I, from the beginning, uh, from my childhood, I was interested in mathematics. Because in my home, my mother was a mathematics teacher. So somehow I get tempted to, I mean, towards mathematics. So I studied up to MSc, actually applied mathematics, and I was trained in mathematician. And then uh, during my MSc, I started uh, interested in physics, and then I did PhD in physics in abroad. So uh, I started working on this quantum computations when that field was... Uh, just starting because it's around 2000, 2001, when I did my, I was doing my PhD. And now probably, I mean, you know, this quantum technology become quite popular and it's already in the news because there are a lot of investment coming. So in physics, it's true that there are very few women and uh, it's true that we at least see nowadays uh, that the MSc students ratio quite high, but in, uh, in job, when we come to the faculty, that's very, very less. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, in my case, it was uh, kind of, again, I think I agree with the other speakers. It's uh, just to fulfill my passion, I just go on doing my research and... Uh, I think for uh, so la largely this, uh, for all women in STEM in our country, it's largely been driven by passion so far. In the process, uh, you know, uh, Professor Ramakrishnan, uh, you faced a lot of obstacles. And the biggest challenge in our country is to balance between your professional and your personal lives. So for women, there is uh, lesser support in that aspect. We have to do that extra, uh, you know, effort towards pursuing our uh, passions. Uh, w was it a similar story with you? Did you have to, you know, uh, face some kind of obstacle while you were balancing your work life with your personal life, your family life? So, I mean, it's, it's I think, a, you know, a balance, a true balance, I'm not sure that's possible. <laughs> uh, there'll be some days uh, when, you know, I feel like I'm a better scientist, other days I'm a better mother, uh, you know, some days a better mentor, some days a better teacher. There are so many roles we all balance. It's not just balancing work and home. There are so many things every individual balances. And I think that uh, uh, it's, of course, very difficult. Uh, I think the most important thing is to realize that you're actually trying to do many things. And so do not judge yourself very harshly on being only one or the other. You can't be perfect. Uh, you're doing the best you can by being yourself. I, I strongly believe that. And I think for young women, that's really important to internalize that they, as individuals, bring something very unique that they're not being there would lose. Uh, at least science is a creative enterprise and each individual brings a really different perspective. And that individuality, that perspective, that creativity cannot be lost. So uh, I don't think, I feel like it's not a choice. You just have to make it happen somehow.
Okay, Anuradha, ma'am, science is a creative enterprise, says Professor Ramakrishnan. Uh, you know, and we've seen there has been a lot of uh, work in this area as well. There are younger people who are now, uh, you know, uh, getting into this field as, uh, as well. But when it comes to female participation, translating into jobs and, you know, actually pursuing the career till the final stage is, is rare. So 43% STEM graduates in India, but just about 12% who actually get into this field and, you know, uh, take it as a career. Year. What is it that is holding them back even now? There are so many efforts, there are so many initiatives, but what is it that still, you know, uh, tells these women to stay back and, you know, look for other, other career options? So, I mean, I think this answer might sound cliched, but, uh, you know, in India, there are uh, many social expectations of women. Uh, and, uh, you know, some women may be in situations where those expectations are lower or they're able to handle them. But overall, uh, most women have many social expectations. And from a cultural perspective, we care a lot about what others think of us. And uh, maybe this pulls us down many times. Uh, this makes us feel we are not adequate. A lack of confidence, I feel, is something which really pulls a lot of women back, young women back. Uh, that said, the real, I mean, the truth is that at least academia, research careers are about consistency, keeping on performing, going, you know, year after year after year. And it's not supportive of, you know, breaks in your career and things like that. So I think that maybe uh, a little bit of sensitivity uh, and thinking about, you know, sometimes people need a bit of time to get back on track, uh, you know, or whatever it may be. Uh, I think it's really important to realize that uh, people are here for the long run. So uh, this competitive, you know, fast thing, uh, may not work for everyone. Okay. I'm not uh, sure that made sense. But, uh, TK and Radha, ma'am, I would like also your perspective. You've been in this field uh, for, you know, quite long. You, uh, I'm sure you've seen uh, transformations happen uh, happening as well over the last several years. But even today, what, according to you, would be some of the factors, you know, in addition to what Professor Ramakrishna has pointed out, which uh, uh, describe the underrepresentation, the gender disparity, which continue to persist in the field of STEM? I think Uma has very beautifully put it. And obviously, the biological reasons which happen uh, at the uh, youth are the most important thing. Uh, marriage and childbearing and family. Family has to be together and you are pursuing your career and family has to be split. It may not be an option for women to uh, pursue their career in that case. And uh, notwithstanding that, as rightly told, the cultural baggage and uh, thinking of what others might think of us is one thing very true that can happen. So it is, I always feel it is interactive. The more you do it, the more it will come back on you. It's very important some point of time. Uh, that's what the education is supposed to give the young men and women to break that nexus between, uh, you know, uh, the cultural baggage feeding on each other, uh, you know, the negative feelings. So that has to come out. At least at some point, if the woman can stand up and tell what I want, I will get. And this is my life, too. And uh, try to make a, it, it doesn't mean that you have to split the family. There are many options. So those options need to be worked out. And there cannot be a single solution. I cannot tell this is the formula you do it. It's not possible. If you are genuinely passionate about doing something, you can do it. There are people who are pursuing their careers and they're great musicians and you know they are pursuing so many talents and why not career and family how hard is it is it tough absolutely so professor you can find your own solutions professor but Sen, so it differs from individual to individual the challenges uh, you know are different and so are the solutions so they cannot be one size fit all solution as uh, you know uh, anradha ma'am said but uh, you know if if you talk about your challenges uh, how did you overcome them and how can we now inspire the younger generation to actually you know yeah. look forward and you know pursue their passion in, in a way that they do not have to choose between uh, family life and their Thank careers you. yeah See, my solution was unique to me. Uh, I made sure that uh, in my house, we are a team. Okay, And uh, me and my husband were growing together in our career. We were a team and uh, 
we ensure that the children are safe at home with the extended family and uh, yeah those things have to be taken care of you cannot just neglect the children or you know the uh, family and uh, i made sure with the extended family i can be comfortable but it need not have to be the solution for everyone and again at the office it was always a team for me you know wonderful team who would stand for each other so we need to have you know the good uh, understanding whether it is family or the office colleagues so you have to make an environment it is up to you if you want to pursue something Absolutely. yes women of our age we may have to run an extra mile but you know not burning out also so that we have to do and uh, as uh, senior women we have been uh, at least uh, several women i have given them uh, you know assurance that everything will be all right they can find a solution think slowly what is best for you and it works and there will be a solution which will come out of them by themselves you know and they have to try it out and you need to try without trying you cannot accept you know uh, the fate of it so that was my solution that Absolutely. i had so, uh, good of course, teams of course there are several factors that are holding you back that with that but with with, with the kind of solutions that uh, you know you you've cited the younger generation has to you know uh, find ways to work out both mm -hmm. have the right balance between obviously work and career if they are very very passionate about it this was about under representation professor sen but uh, you know uh, uh, ha, uh, the, the other big challenge is gender disparity and not just in india it's a global uh, you know challenge when we talk about the representation of women in stem uh, disciplines so uh, you know a world bank report says only 17 women so far have won a nobel prize in physics chemistry or medicine since marie curie back in 1903 and this compared to nearly about 600 men until 2017 so five years have gone uh, gone by so i i, I think nearly 6600 mem uh, men compared to just about 17 women how fair is that how are we going to you know take on this kind of gender disparity which is a global picture now yeah actually i think uh, that's uh, kind of related to the question that already people have answered because i think the number of uh, faculties are less in number so if you think about the prizes so it's always there are many men who apply for prizes and only some of them can get it right and this is true for whether you talk about nobel prize or any other prizes in india or other places now since the pool who are applying for the awards are less if you compare i mean if you think about women because the women faculty ratio is very small compared to the men faculty in stem if you look and so the applications uh, particularly in any award uh, which some of the committees now we all are involved and we see that even the applications are so less so of course there is a chance that uh, that they will be successful so this is true not only in india as you mentioned it's also true worldwide so i think the previous question is kind of related to this if the numbers are increasing so if we can at some point if we have say 50 50% i mean you know the ratio becomes equal then of course there will be more applicant for awards and other you know the projects or in uh, in other things and so then there will be a uh true competition now Absolutely. it's so uh, already if, if we work towards increasing participation disparity. of women in stem perhaps uh, the disparity part can be taken care of uh, by itself uh, uh, anuradha ma'am coming back to you since you are you know the senior most uh, uh, among the panelists today uh, let's talk about you know the transformation that you have seen over the decades in terms of the various efforts the initiatives that have taken place in encouraging more and more young women to join uh, the stem discipline in terms of not just the government support but also motivation from families from societies uh, or, you know since your journey began to now yeah um in all sectors there is a huge uh, improvement uh, if you take the office environment it is more conducive now and you know uh, the basic necessities for women what is required is definitely provided because numbers are not as low as it used to be and it has to be provided and uh, the good facilities like you know uh, babysitting near the office those things have really helped and uh, 
in fact the modern india is bringing up children with a need for education it is not an option it has education is a must and you can see even at the lowest uh, economically lower rung people too struggle so that their children get good education that is india so when that is happening that is with a anticipation that they will stand on their leg and that is how it is going in fact uh, that is why you see today in any engineering college or any science classes 50% are girls and why they are not pursuing career later in spite of all this you know motivation is um, you know uh, purely a cultural baggage i'm sure it is coming down day by day and uh, uh, many girls are venturing out and they're doing a great job and also at the offices there have been lot of encouragement with you know um, special awards and uh, prizes for women to make them motivated to you know participate and um, not withstanding that a simple measure of equality no speciality that equality itself is a good motivation where uh, you know there is no differentiation in office and many of the scientific institutions who are true to science they will not see the gender so like isro uh, when you are working that way there is a great motivation there is a, a you know uh, you can see a, um, something that is big that is happening in front of your eyes and you are part of that and the ownership should happen uh, in the minds of the youngsters then automatically the motivation happen if it is a boring job you know uh, why am i doing this i could i could as well be there at home is something but notwithstanding all this the middle class india where it is the biggest population they want comfortable life and uh, naturally uh, everybody is interested in taking up jobs improve their financial condition i think modern india is moving with some motivation or the other various types they are pushing uh, and pushing themselves pushing their uh, young girls at home that they have to be uh, you know self dependent and they have to move on so i think in uh, probably another decade you see i don't think we'll be discussing this so i really hope that uh, uh, things would have improved a lot i am seeing in my own organization absolutely so, so many I... young women ready to take responsibilities which was very rare in the earlier condition now it is not like that and they are very competitive and in fact one of the statistical report i read it's not about how many women are there in the office environment it's more of of those women what is the percentage of people who are coming up if you see that i think they are doing exceedingly good in most of the organizations absolutely professor sen what's important is not just to you know increase the participation of women so uh, as you know anuradha ma'am said not just the number of women but what's important is to also ensure that those who are there who, who among them are you know taking up the leadership position so at the same time inculcate the leadership qualities identify in fact the potential and the talent so for that what would be your suggestion what are the kind of you know transformations that we still need to you know uh, undergo in order uh, to you know have this kind of environment that anuradha ma'am spoke about in the next decade or so wherein we will not even be discussing such a subject okay so i mean i think that it is actually i mean for as you said that um, even the small number of women probably in a, in a, in some position and among them who will be i mean in the you know leadership position i think this is actually the number in that sense is encouraging because Uh, there are many women who are in the field who have the job they are really going up i mean they are trying and they are doing very well and i think for that i think that the mm-hmm. confidence is uh, one of the thing that uh, i think is required to show that uh, because among the the field which is kind of dominated by men they are also you are capable to do uh, something so i think uh, in some sense uh, if you cross the barrier the initial barrier that means getting job after that probably at least from my experience i can say that usually women get uh, confidence over time that they can be a good mentor they can be a good teacher and that also gives the confidence to the students and uh, 
among other colleagues that okay she is also capable to do and you get more and more responsibility absolutely so not just in getting into way, the job but what also, also matters is the longevity and the sustainability uh, professor ramakrishnan so you know for young students especially the females who are starting out in conservation now what would your advice be i i, I think like i said i really believe that uh, they should believe in themselves uh, they should believe in what they can do they should believe uh, like uh, anuradha ma'am said that they can find solutions they can solve problems they shouldn't give up uh, because really what they bring is of great value it's a tremendous value and if they stop it's a collective loss it's a loss to all of us so um, yeah i just think it's really really important for people to have confidence in themselves to believe that they bring something unique and to just allow themselves to be to bring that out uh, in some way uh, and i'm sure that everything else will be fine okay so i'll take one uh, you know final word from anuradha ma'am on you know a positive message for the young stem graduates to you know help them encourage and motivate them that we've seen a positive growth you've been the senior most in the panel in fact you've spoken about the transformations that you've seen over the years but for now the future generation to be the face of the change that we are talking about to be the real change makers in in india's future when we mark say about 100 years of our independence what would your positive message for the youngsters be ma'am tell them that they are capable go and do what you can and enjoy it's your life and lead your life nobody else can lead your life right so absolutely they have to put their best efforts in achieving what they want their dreams they have to follow their passion they have to follow certainly so that having been said and with that very very positive message coming in from tk anuradha i'll wind up the discussion thank you once again to you know uh, the wonderful panelists for joining us on the program today sharing your journeys your stories and also you know uh, the positive messages for the younger generation that will of course go, inspire them in the future it was an absolute pleasure to have you all three on the program today with us and uh, you know talk to us at length about your journeys uh, thank you very much for your time and look forward to having more such interactions in future with you as well so that's it from us uh, viewers on this special broadcast thank you very much for your time as well take care and keep Keep watching Sun City.